It's now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Walleen. He is an optometrist and a PhD, and he's at the Ohio State University College of Optometry. He received his Doctor of Optometry degree from the University of California, Berkeley, and then he received his master's and PhD from the Ohio State University. Dr. Walleen has led tons and tons and tons of studies, and I love the acronyms that he always comes up with. They're so clever. And he is not only an amazing researcher, but he's an amazing educator, and we are very lucky to hear from him today. I'm very excited for his talk. This is a topic that a lot of people have requested. So you are hearing from one of the best in the best as far as research goes, and it is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Walleen. Thank you, Dr. Wu, very much. I really do appreciate the opportunity to talk to people about fitting kids with contact lenses because I really do think it is an important thing for us to know, especially in these times of advancements in myopia control. It is um, something that I think will really guide parents to want to fit their children at earlier ages, so we've got to be ready for it. So um, stay tuned. We're going to talk about fitting kids with contact lenses, but not specifically orthokeratology, but contact lenses in general. But before I get started, I do want to give just a couple of generalities for orthokeratology that will hopefully make it easier for you. One is, is that orthokeratology um, really, it doesn't matter what type you use. It all provides essentially the same myopia control. So when you choose the, the brand that you want to use, you want to work with the company that you work with best, work with the brand that you think is best for your patients. Um, in terms of myopia control, they all should provide very similar amounts of myopia control, although no um, studies have actually directly compared different brands of orthokeratology. And then second, when you're trying to decide which type you want to fit, that's which way you want to fit, I think it's really important thing to think about. And that's part of the way you can choose which one you ultimately want to do. In other words, do you want to put a contact lens on the eye and see it on the eye and then pull from an inventory? Or would you rather just get some numbers, plug it in, and then receive a contact lens that is most likely to fit your patient? Those are the kinds you want to think about when trying to figure out what type of orthokeratology contact lens might be appropriate for your practice if you're not already doing it. Um, with this lecture, I have no relevant financial or non-financial relationships in the products or anything that I'm going to talk about in this presentation, so really nothing to disclose here. But by the end of this lecture, I hope that you're able to talk to the parents about pediatric contact lens wear because ultimately that's gonna make it easier for you to be able to fit kids with contact lenses because as you see here, I've been really, really lucky and I've been able to travel the world to talk about fitting kids with contact lenses. Um, and when I do, I of course talk to practitioners and just ask the general question of, you know, when do you usually start fitting kids with contact lenses? And I would say in the United States, we're fitting kids with contact lenses earlier than most countries. And this is typically soft contact lenses. Um, in the United States, in Australia, 12 or 13 years is the general age at which general practitioners start to fit patients with contact lenses. You are probably more advanced than the general practitioners and probably are fitting kids at much earlier ages. But if you go out there in the wide, uh, whole wide world of, of general practitioners in terms of optometry, you'll find that they typically start fitting kids about age 12 or 13. In Europe, it's a little bit older. In Asia, it's much older. However, it's interesting because in Asia, they will fit very young children with orthokeratology, not really considering them contact lenses, considering more of a therapy. So they're much more willing to fit kids with contact lenses when it comes to orthokeratology, probably as early as four, five, six years of age. But when it comes to soft contact lenses, it's typically not until 17 or 18 years of age. And this is just a little graph to show you kind of where the United States is in terms of how often we fit kids with contact lenses. So this is looking at the proportion of fits that are in teenagers, children, and infants, and um, the proportion of all the fits, basically, which ones are not adult fits. And you can see that the U.S. is right up there in terms of when we fit kids with contact lenses, but there's a big, huge distribution. Some countries fit very few kids with contact lenses. Some countries fit more than the United States. 
but it is a demographic that I think is changing fairly rapidly with the advancement of myopia control, because some of the stronger ways to slow the progression of myopia are with contact lenses. But you might be wondering, why would I ever want to fit a kid with contact lenses? They cry, they might even scream, and sometimes they even kick. And that's not something that we're really looking forward to on a routine basis. But that's not the kids we're talking about. Again, we're talking primarily about those young myopic children who need myopia control. So those eight, seven, eight, nine-year-old kids is usually the youngest that we fit on a routine basis for myopia control. And they're almost like shorter adults. They're not, they might be a little more anxious, but overall they're not all that different otherwise. So we're not talking about these crazy, nasty little two and three-year-olds who can do a lot of damage when they really want to. Another reason to fit kids with contact lenses is you can be unique in your area because as I said, out there in the real world, people aren't generally fitting kids with contact lenses until they become teenagers. If you start fitting them at earlier ages, then you will be unique in your area. And that's one strong way to build your practice is to be unique. Do something different than every other doctor out there. That's the way you can get patients to come to your practice more routinely. And then this isn't the reason to fit kids with contact lenses, but it's in the benefit of fitting kids with contact lenses. There is additional income because kids still need glasses. Even if they wear contact lenses, you got to have those backups. So you fit kids with contact, you fit them with glasses. You also fit them with contact lenses. So there's a little bit of additional income, although we all know that there's not a lot of overhead on the materials. So it's really the professional time that you're spent fitting the kids with contact lenses where you're making a little additional income. But I would say almost as importantly, kids are like free advertising. Kids are really social creatures. And so when one kid gets fit with contact lenses, the moms, and let's be honest, it's typically the moms, the moms start talking and say, hey, where's your kid's glasses? And you can say, or that mom might say, you know, I went to this really great doctor. Um, he or she fit my kids in contact lenses. You should try that. And then you get a new family to come to your practice. Not only do you get the kids, but then you get the adults. And maybe you'll be lucky enough to get parents that look like these to come to your practice as well. And then as we've already talked about, you know I'm going to talk about it on a routine basis, myopia control. There are um, lots of modalities that we can use for myopia control, but two of the main ones are soft multifocal contact lenses with the center distance design and orthokeratology. So these are ways and reasons that we should fit kids with contact lenses because it really can not only benefit the patients, but your practice. But I would say the main reason to fit kids with contact lenses is that they provide you with that little bit of a challenge that's not something that you dread. So every kid is unique. They are all different and you never quite know how to respond to them or how they're going to respond. So they add this little excitement to the practice that might not have been there if you're only working with adults or only fitting adults with contact lenses. It just provides you with a little challenge that really makes it fun. So I would say try it for that reason, if for no other reason. But the question becomes, how do I introduce contact lenses? And I know a lot of practitioners who don't want to start talking to kids or parents about their kid being fit with contact lenses because it makes it sound like they're selling something that's not necessary. But as I said, you can get lots of kids can get lots of benefits from contact lenses and you're gonna see a little bit more about that later. Um, but if you're not comfortable talking to parents about kids with contact lenses, there are things that you can do to help make it a little bit easier. And I'm gonna go through some of those. So I literally went on the internet and found some fun pictures. And it didn't take me very long to do. Now, I would be happy to share these pictures with you, but I did not purchase the rights to these pictures. So I'm only showing you them to give you ideas of what you can ultimately do. But you can go on and purchase pictures like this, put some fun little phrases with it. So skip for joy when kids can wear contact lenses and then tell them how to contact you. And you can put these, you can basically take the printer, print this out, put it in a nice frame and place it in your practice give the idea to the parents to ask you about contact lenses. Our clinic wasn't so happy about this one because they thought it gave a negative attitude toward glasses. But in my mind, the kids who most want contact lenses probably already have that, that negative attitude. So you may find this fun or you may not, um, but it is something that you can think about. Same thing with this one. They didn't, the clinic didn't really love this one and wouldn't want, didn't want to put this on television screens in the, in the practice. 
but it is something you can think about. This is my favorite. This is the one I love. Now, this is not the demographic I'm really going for, but ultimately, it's just something to get the parents thinking about it to maybe ask me the questions about, should my kid be fit with contact lenses? And then this really puts it in their mind because this drives home the point of one of the main reasons you would fit kids with contact lenses. They're really active and they participate in lots of activities. And when they're participating in a variety of activities, contact lenses are by far the best vision correction choice. So just put the idea in their mind, help them think about this. And this is another example of that exact same thing. So as I said, those are all ways to get the parents to ask you, but another way might be instead of just talking to certain um, kids about it, tell everybody. So just make it a message to everybody because you really should be providing your patients with the options that are available to them. And so the option of contact lenses as vision correction, especially for those young nearsighted children, you know, it is a perfect thing to talk to them about. And you can just simply say, you know, we can fit your child with glasses or contact lenses. And that will get the point across to the parents that, hey, contact lenses are an option for my kids. Because these parents, quite frankly, they were fit when they were teenagers. And they don't think that young kids can be fit with contact lenses at, until that age. But we know with daily disposable contact lenses and with better abilities to take care of contact lenses, we can fit kids at younger ages today. And then if you only want to tell those who will benefit the most, because anytime you provide a treatment, you have to weigh the risks versus the benefits. And if the benefits are greater, then the risks matter less. And so the, the kids who are going to benefit the most are those young, active kids, those kids who are swimming all the time, the kids who are participating in sporting activities, whether it's outdoors or indoors, you know, those gymnasts who are, have the chalk dust on their hands. Contact lenses can be a great option for them. Or it might be those kids who just don't like the way they look in glasses. And we know that there are some out there, or they might be being teased by their friends. And if they are, they might not be willing to wear glasses. Those are the kids who will probably benefit the most. So if you don't want to tell everybody the message, at least tell those kids because they really can benefit from it. But one important thing to keep in mind is that everybody in the office must have the same message. So if you don't do it, routinely you should be talking to your staff about, hey, what do we tell patients about A? Or what do we tell patients about B? And make sure that everybody's on the same page. If you have a staff member who has it in their mind that kids really shouldn't be fit with contact lenses until age 13, we need to have that staff member not be involved with kid, um, the care of kids. Or their message to parents can simply be, hey, tell you what, I'm not sure about the answer to that, but why don't you talk to the doctor? The doctor can provide you with more information. Because let's be honest, there are some people who just don't believe that kids are um, appropriate for contact lens wear yet. Um, one of the other main takeaway points from this is your staff should not be wearing any outfits that are this color. That is just not nice. <laughs> What about first time correction? I think it's an important question. I know a lot of doctors who will tell their patients, hey, we'll fit you in glasses now that you're myopic. And when you come back in a year, we can talk about contact lenses. But what is it about a year of spectacle wear that's gonna make them better contact lens wearers? I can't quite figure out why, where that message has ever come from. You know, I understand that it might make them a year more mature, but they're probably mature enough if, they're, if they've become myopic. And if they're not mature enough and they become myopic, then it might be medically necessary because they might, you know, a four-year-old child who's become myopic, I think myopia control is almost myopic, is medically necessary. So at that age, you know, I might be willing to let the parents take care of the contact lenses until the child is mature enough to take care of them. So I think contact lenses are very appropriate as a first time correction, especially for these young myopic children. But what about those kids, let's be honest, boys, um, who can't take care of their glasses? They constantly lose them or they constantly break them. Are they mature enough to handle contact lenses? I actually think that they are the most appropriate people for contact lens wear because we never lose our glasses when, well, I shouldn't say, children don't ever lose their glasses for long periods of time when they're on their face. I have lost reading glasses on my while they're on my face. And we all, a lot of us have probably, but we don't lose them for long periods of time. Eventually we realize our stupidity. 
And typically kids don't break the glasses when they're on their face. Usually they break the glasses when they're on the playground and their glasses are on the bench or probably on the ground itself. Um, so I actually think that those kids are the best, again, the best people for contact lenses. If they can't take care of their glasses. It's generally because they aren't wearing them. And if they're not wearing them, they can't see very well. So I think the best thing for those patients is to give them vision correction that they put in the morning. They don't touch until they go to bed at night. Then they take them out of their eyes. That way they wear their vision correction all day long, rather than putting it on, taking it off and generally not wearing it and losing it or breaking it. Now, fitting kids with contact lenses um, can, like I said, is one of those what I call an interesting or a fun challenge because it's not so difficult that it, you, know, you don't look forward to it, but it does provide you with a little bit of excitement in the practice. But the question becomes, how should you treat children? There are lots of ways to treat children. Um, Chris Scent does a lot of, she fits a lot of kids with contact lenses, and we do a lot of these similar lectures, and she will tell you that the way she treats kids is she sits down with them right next to them, and she has a conversation with them, you know. She might put her hands on their knees just to com comfort them a little bit. She will let, you know, let them ask questions, talk to them. She's very empathetic. Now, I am exactly the opposite. I have no empathy. As a matter of fact, I just did the Clifton Strengths Finder. And out of my 34 strengths, what, what ranked 34th? Sadly, it was empathy. So I understand that that is not me. I am that crazy aunt or uncle. Instead of sitting down and talking to them, I'm going to try and sneak in and put that contact lens in their eye before they even know what's coming. So I will put the, turn my back to them and get the contact lens ready, put it on my finger. And then just before I turn around and say, hey, look over there, what is that? And then literally try and sneak up on them, open up their eyelids and put the contact lens on as fast as I can so that anxiety doesn't build up. Now, both of those methods are very successful. Chris and I can both fit lots and lots and lots of kids with contact lenses. Not very often we have a kid that we are not able to fit with contact lenses, but we both have very different approaches. So my basic message here is just do what comes naturally to you. Because if you try to be somebody who you're not, the kids can generally sense that and their anxiety will build and they will become nasty. So just be yourself, do what comes natural. It will work almost every time. However, having said that, it doesn't work every time. Sometimes you have to switch and you have to, I have to become empathetic. Chris has to become that crazy person, but we do that not as a first resort. We do that as a backup. Um, and I think it works well for both of us. Um, I think one piece of advice specific to orthokeratology, not used with soft contact lenses, is it's okay to put a drop of anesthetic on before you put the contact lens on the eye. And actually, I don't put the drop of anesthetic into the eye because I don't want any additional things being put into the eye. I want to go in once if I can. So instead of putting the anesthetic in the eye, I put the anesthetic in the contact lens. So generally, I put the contact lens on my finger, put a drop of anesthetic in it with my back to the child so they can't see it. I actually displace most of that drop with my finger because if I don't, when I tip my finger up to put it on the eye, the contact lens might fall off my finger. So I displace most of that drop and then I put it on the eye. That drop, there's still enough anesthetic in there that the child will have less of um, sensation. So they'll be easier to get used to the contact lens for that short period of time. But most importantly, it makes it easier for me to take a look at the floor seam pattern because I don't have a ton of reflex um, tearing. And so it just makes looking at the fit a lot easier. And I don't think very many of us can teach insertion and removal in less than 15 minutes if this happens to be the dispense. So I'm even okay doing that at the dispense. That way the sensation, the full sensation sort of slowly comes into play and it makes it more likely to be successful initially. Um, and they'll never, you know, if you, if you can teach them to do it in less than 15 minutes, then this kid isn't going to have any problems over the long term anyway, but most of us require more than 15 minutes to teach them. And by that time, the full sensation will be back. So they won't be leaving your office without full corneal sensation. So I think using anesthetic at both that fitting visit and the dispensing visit, if it's a separate visit are appropriate. Um, especially for young kids, just to try and make it a little bit easier. I even do that for adults. 
Um, what about the parents? You know, uh, parents are what make fitting a child difficult, to be quite honest, many times. So the children really provide very, very few problems, but it's the adults who, um, you know, when, you, when the child is struggling and you're telling the child, I want you to use the left hand on the top eyelid, middle finger on the bottom eyelid, and put that contact lens on. When the parent comes in and says, oh, no, I, I, I just do this. Try this. Try this. Ugh. Drives me absolutely crazy because I know that that's not the best way for the child to be learning. Um, I've got lots of experience and I know that, you know, maybe after a month of the child being able to do it routinely, then the child absolutely can try the way the parent does. But remember, that parent's been putting in contact lenses for a whole bunch of years. So that's why it's easy for them to do this. Not so easy for the child to do that. So I usually, but I want the parent to be in the room. I really do. A, I want to remind them of the good habits of contact lens wear. B, I want them to know what I'm teaching the child. Um, but if they are start telling the child something different than I'm trying to tell the child, that's when I try and get them out of the room. And 99% of the time, all I can say, I, you know, I, all I need to say to the parent is, you know, if you don't mind, I'm going to have you step out for just a little bit. I'm going to tell, you know, you everything that I tell the child when you come back in. But I think it's easier for me to do this one on one with their child. And if that doesn't work, then, you know, you might have a secret signal with a staff or something like that. This means bring in that long form with about 200 questions in it and tell the parent, oh, we forgot to have you fill this out. You know, it can be a form about how a child uses their eyes. And you may not ever use the information in that form, but your staff member can come in with that form that has lots of questions and tell the parent, hey, we forgot to have you fill out this form. If you could come out to the waiting area and fill out this form, we'd really appreciate this information. I'm sorry, I forgot to have you do it earlier. Get the parent out of there. Then teach the child the insertion removal. And when the parent finishes the form, they can come back in and you can use that form as a doorstep. And then this is a rule that isn't specific to children. I think it's for everybody. But if after 45 minutes, you know, the child still hasn't gotten a contact lens in the eye or hasn't been able to take a contact lens out of the eye, it's probably time for a break. And so at that point, you know, you can, if you have time later in your schedule, you can schedule them for later that day. Or what I generally do is say, hey, you know, you've done a really great job. This is just going to take a little bit longer. So let's send you home with some eye-touching exercises. And when, when you come back next time, I think it'll be much easier for you. So what I actually have them do is, of course, wash their hands. And then I literally have them do eye-touching exercises. Left hand on the top eyelid, middle finger on the bottom eyelid. I just want you to be able to touch your eye without letting go. And once you can touch your eye, then I want you to actually hold your finger on your eye for five seconds without letting go. And once you can touch your finger on your eye for five seconds, then I want you to actually tap your eye five times without letting go. Once you can do that, you can put a contact lens in the eye. You can probably throw a contact lens in the eye. But that's the goal. So I tell them, I want you to do that every day for five minutes in the morning with the right eye and five minutes with the left eye. Then when you come back at your next visit, I think it'll be much easier. And generally it is much, much easier for the child. And then with kids, you have to be flexible. We talked about that earlier, but there is one hard and fast rule that I have. And that is if you can't remove them alone, you can't take them home. I honestly don't care if they can't put them in because if they're in their case, they're not gonna do any damage to their eye. But if they're stuck in their eye, they can do a lot of damage. So they have to prove to me that they can take them out of their eyes before they can take them home. If they can't, then I'll keep them in my office. We'll bring you back in a week or you know, three days or whatever. And um, we'll have you um, practice again at that time. But can't take them home right now. We'll get this. Don't worry about it. That kind of message, I think, is important. And then talk to your staff about what message you want about swimming. because. Kids swim. Adults don't swim, so you might not have ever talked about this message with your staff. But it can be anywhere from, you know, don't don't get within 10 miles of a swimming pool if you with your contact lenses in your eyes, to, you know, you might as well swim with your contact lenses in so you can see. You don't need to do anything different. I probably would steer clear of the latter. I would probably go more toward the former. And what I personally generally tell people is you can wear your contact lenses in the swimming pool, for example, but when you get done swimming, I want you to take them out and throw them away if they're daily disposable or 
um, clean them overnight, disinfect them overnight, and the next day you can put them back in. Now, if they're swimming a lot, then I like fitting them with orthokeratology because at least that way they're not wearing their contact lenses in the swimming pool. So these are some things that you have to think about and keep in mind with your practice. Talk to your staff about them, get these messages clear so that everybody is giving their patients the same message. Now, as we talked about, um, eye care practitioners in the United States tend to fit kids with contact lenses when they become teenagers. And so we actually did a study at Ohio State and two other um, clinical sites, the University of Houston and, and the New England College of Optometry. And we compared fitting eight to 12 year old kids, those you know, new young myopes to 13 to 17 year olds, those teenagers. And we asked these five questions to really show eye care practitioners that kids can wear contact lenses and that it's not gonna change your practice in any way, shape or form. So in this study, we included eight to 17 year old kids. And this is the one and only study that I did where that I included with motion. Um, I went to Berkeley and we always said that with motion was an ocular emergency at Berkeley um, because we didn't treat any hyperopes there. Um, so this is the one study that I allowed that actually allowed hyperopes. And it's the one study that I allowed that allowed astigmatism. So we actually have some hyperopic astigmats in this particular study. First question we tried to answer was, does fitting children require more chair time than um, fitting teenagers? And we, re we um, measured the time it took to do that initial fitting. We measured the time that it took to teach insertion removal. And then we um, measured that one week, one month and three month follow-up visits. And this is the amount of time it took. You can see that overall it did actually take children longer amount of time to do all these than teenagers. But what I want you to see is that really that difference lies here in the insertion and removal training. All these others are very, very similar. There's no significant differences between these other visits. So let's look specifically at that insertion and removal training. This is a frequency diagram where we're comparing the proportion of children that took zero to 20 minutes, 20 to 40, et cetera, to the proportion of teenagers. And what you can see is that there's a lot of overlap. So they're very similar between children and teenagers for the most part. However, twice as many teenagers took less than 20 minutes than children. And a few children had to come back for multiple visits, whereas very few teenagers had to do that. So the differences lie in the outliers, not for most teenagers and children. Most of the time, there's not a very big difference. And one of the things you should keep in mind is that that insertion and removal training is typically done by your staff. So your office productivity doesn't necessarily slow down, especially if they have a room that is dedicated to fitting or teaching insertion and removal. Or let's be honest, in most practices, it's in a closet somewhere. But um, hopefully there is dedicated space. You don't have to take up a chair time to actually teach insertion and removal. But for the most part, there's really no difference between fitting children and teenagers anyway. And one of the biggest surprises from this study was we thought that just the doctor just looking at the kid would not be able to predict how difficult they thought it would be to fit this kid with contact lenses. Well, that overall time, um, this um, is measured here. And you can see if the doctor initially said that kid's going to be extremely easy to fit, took much less time than if the doctor said that kid's going to be extremely difficult to fit. And remember, that's just based on initial impression. I, we suspected that they would never be able to um, uh, uh, predict which children would actually be difficult to fit. So we didn't ask any follow-up questions. So after the study was over, when we found this result, then we asked the doctors, and these are the things that they um, talked about. It was the child's motivation. If the child was motivated, they'd be more likely to easy to fit. If they were less nervous, they'd be easier to fit. Maturity, I don't really necessarily understand that, but mature, it probably goes along with anxiety and motivation, I think. Hygiene, I definitely don't understand. They're basically, they were looking at the kids' fingernails if they weren't cut or, you know, if their hair was a mess, they thought they'd be less likely to be good contact lens candidates. I don't see why that'd make them easier and more difficult to fit. I do see why they might be more successful as a long-term candidate for contact lens wear. Um, but these are the things that the doctors really talked about, and aperture size was probably a big one as well. What about the risk to children? Well, in this particular study, we measured some of the um, slit length findings with this, 
And we found that there were no significant differences between children and teenagers. There were some significant increases from baseline to three months, but um, really none of, none of the children were discontinued because of any of these slit lamp signs. So really we weren't causing any significant problems. And again, there were no significant differences between children and teenagers. But what about, you know, when you teach them insertion removal, how well are they gonna remember that information? If they're, you know, if they're fit as children, maybe they won't remember the information as well. And that's actually what we found. So we gave them a quiz right after we taught, taught them insertion removal. And we gave them a quiz three months later. And this was a pop quiz. We didn't tell them it was coming and we didn't allow them to prepare. And you can see that there was actually a significant decrease in the proportion of questions that they got right for children, but not for teenagers. And at three months, there was a significant difference between children and teenagers. However, they both got basically 90% of the questions right. So this is statistically significant, but may not be clinically meaningful. But I think it, uh, it tells us that we need to remind children how to care for their contact lenses, either by just providing them with simple reminders or by asking them how they're taking care of their contact lenses and then correcting them when they're not doing it appropriately. What about the benefits? Risks versus benefits are very important. And um, this is uh, the benefits in terms of quality of life. So in this particular study, we had them fill out the same survey, first of all, when they were wearing glasses, and then we switched them all to contact lenses. So three months later, after they'd been wearing contact lenses for three months, and we looked at their change in their um, quality of life scores. So you can see all the scales that we have in our quality of life scales. And you can see the teenagers in gray and the children in scarlet. And you can see no significant differences between any between children and teenagers in any of these scales. You can also see that all of these scales improved with contact lens wear. That's why the bars point to the right. If they got worse with contact lens wear, then the bars would point to the left. Um, where you see the biggest improvements are in activities and appearance. So you might remember earlier when I talked about those kids who would benefit the most from contact lens wear, it's those kids who are in activities a lot and those kids who don't like their parents with glasses. If those are the case, then they are gonna get the biggest benefits. So that risk to benefit ratio is in the right direction. So those are the ones who in particular, you should tell about um, the option of contact lens wear. And then overall satisfaction we think is driven primarily by they feel better about how they look and they feel better about the activities that they participate in. Those are two important things for quality of life to children. The surprise to us was that handling was actually easier with contact lenses. And when you go back and look at the individual questions that they're answering, it's basically because if they don't wear their, if they, if they um, don't like wearing their glasses, they put them on and take them off several times a day. So they have to handle them more frequently. They don't like the handling as much. Whereas with contact lenses, they put them in in the morning, don't think about them until they take them out at night. And so um, they actually like handling of contact lenses better than glasses in this particular study. So what should you take away from that? Um, one of the things you can take away is that it does take longer for you to fit children with contact lenses, but it's really in that insertion removal training, which is performed by staff. So it shouldn't cut down on the productivity of your office. So you should be willing to fit kids with contact lenses. Um, there are no additional health risks for fitting kids with contact lenses, but they do get more benefits, especially in terms of quality of life. And ultimately, you really need to reinforce how to care for contact lenses on a routine basis. And I do that with all patients, but probably particularly with children because they're more likely to forget some of the messages that you give them initially. Um, and then again, the ones who will benefit the most are those young active kids participating in sporting or recreational activities, and also the ones who don't like wearing their contact lenses. But it's an indirect, I think, thing to take away from this study is don't use age as a criteria for fitting contact lenses. Don't say we'll fit any kid eight years and older. Because I, you've probably heard me say this before, we all know a four-year-old who we can fit with contact lenses and can insert and remove them herself. And we all know 25-year-olds who absolutely cannot take care of a contact lens to save their life. So age should not be the sole determinant of whether or not you fit kids with contact lenses. Instead, what I like to use is the three M's, maturity, mother, and motivation. 
So if the child's motivated, it's going to be easier to fit them with contact lenses. If they're mature, they're more likely to take care of their contact lenses. And I like the mother to be caring, but not overbearing. So I don't want it to be one of those helicopter parents who is there taking care of the contact lenses for the child all the time, putting them in and taking them out. Instead, I want the child to be doing that if it's an elective contact lens for my, you know, potentially for myopy control. If it's a medically necessary contact lens, you know, a five diopter myope who's four years old, I think that's medically necessary. One good rule of thumb is if the myopia is greater than the age, in other words, if you have a two-year-old with three diopters of myopia or a five-year-old with six diopters of myopia, that I think is a medically necessary contact lens. Um, and so that's when I'm more willing to allow the parents to care for the contact lenses. Otherwise, it really is the children who should be doing so. But we've talked about it. Contact lenses are great for myopia control. Orthokeratology provides the best slowing of eye growth of all of these. Now, these differences, I would argue, are not clinically meaningful between that and multifocal contact lenses, for example. But just by the numbers, orthokeratology provides the best slowing of eye growth. But we can't measure change in refractive error. That's why we don't have a black bar here. Um, because we're temporarily reducing the refractive error. When it comes to soft multifocal contact lenses, they provide as good a myopia control as any of these others, except for high concentration atrophy, which um, we aren't using because of the side effects of it. So I think these are two great options along with some others, but these, these contact lenses are two great options. And I think we should be uh, willing to fit kids with them because they can really benefit, get some non-visual benefits ultimately. And then we did a study to take a look at the potential for other side effects or benefits really of contact lens wear. And in this particular study, we had five clinical setters, 484 kids, three fifths of them were female, 10 and a half years of age. Um, about half of them were Caucasian, about a quarter of them were black, a quarter of them were Hispanic. And we fit them with, or we randomly assigned them to wear soft contact lenses or glasses for three years. And this is at a time when less than 10, fewer than 10% of patients were fit with daily disposable contact lenses. But we gave the parents a choice. Do you want daily disposable for your child or do you want frequent replacement? Now, granted, these contact lenses were given to them for free. 93% of them chose, of the parents chose daily disposable for their children. But then we told them how much daily disposable contact lenses versus frequent replacement contact lenses would cost. And at that time, 63% of them still chose daily disposable, despite the fact that fewer than 10% of patients were actually fit with daily disposable at the time. So one important thing to take away here is that don't allow cost affect what you tell patients about. Provide them with the options. Tell them, what's, tell them what the best options are. Tell them what other options are if necessary but tell them the options, let them choose if they want to pay for some pay premium for something that really is a premium product and really can benefit the child in the long run. In this particular study, we were using single vision contact lenses. And at the time we learned, we knew about myopic creep or increased myopia progression with soft contact lenses. It's something that had been shown to be true, but only over short term. When we measured these kids over long term, we actually did found, find faster myopia progression by those wearing contact lenses and those wearing glasses. But after three years, that difference was less than a quarter of a diopter. So we had lots of kids in the study, so it was statistically significant. However, it wasn't clinically meaningful. So what that the takeaway point is, is that if you're gonna fit kids with single vision contact lenses, you're not going to increase their myopia progression. And this points to that even more. This is eye growth with contact lenses versus glasses. And you can see absolutely no difference. But the benefits they can receive are in self-perceptions. So if these lines, which are 95% confidence intervals, if they lie completely to the right, the right of this dash line, that means that um, kids feel about, better about themselves when they wear contact lenses. If one of these lines um, was all the way to the left of this dash line, then they would feel better about themselves when they wear glasses, but they don't. Where you can see that kids get the most benefit is in, again, physical appearance and athletic competence. So they feel like they feel better looking with contact lenses and they feel like better athletes with contact lenses. And then they feel like their friends like them better 
if they wear contact lenses. And it probably is driven again by their physical appearance and athletic competence. And kids also felt smarter, but only if they didn't like wearing glasses. And we think that's because if they don't like wearing glasses, guess what? They don't wear them in the classroom. And if they don't wear them in the classroom, they don't feel as smart. So we think it's um, uh, just an additional non-visual benefit that children get from contact lenses and really is another reason to fit young kids with contact lenses. So what should you take away from that? It's that soft single vision contact lenses don't actually increase myopia progression. Soft multifocal contact lenses with the center distance design can actually slow myopia progression. So kids can get a lot of non-visual benefit from these contact lenses. And they can even improve self-esteem. So kids will feel better about how they look, how well they participate in sports, and um, how what their kid what their friends think about them if they wear contact lenses. So lots of additional benefits. And then we wondered about the long-term effects of contact lenses. What if you fit people as, as kids versus if you fit them as teenagers and then follow them for 10 years? Would they have any additional problems? And what you can see is uh, that the two groups were fairly similar at the very beginning of the study, those fit as children versus those fit as teenagers. And um, when we asked them about their contact lens wear, in terms of their comfort, there was no significant difference if they were fit as children versus if they were fit as teens. The main thing that we wanted to take away from this was did if they were fit as children, did they have more red eye painful red eye visits to the doctor, which we consider the most significant visits. And you can see that about 20% of the kids and those 20% of those fit as children had those reported those same types of visits. So we don't think we're causing any more significant problems by fitting people at younger ages. And then there was no significant differences in any of these next few slides I'm gonna show you, but they um, show us some important things that I think we've gotta keep in mind. When it comes to swimming, you can see that half of both children and teenagers do nothing different. They just swim in their contact lenses and then they take them out at the end of the day, don't do anything different. We now know that we probably should do something different. And that's like usually remove them after swimming, maybe wear goggles, depending on what your comfort level is in your practice. Um, we don't have good strong evidence right now to show which one of these might be best, but we know it's probably not doing nothing because we know that these contact lenses can harbor bacteria in them when they're worn in, worn in the swimming to, in the swimming pool. Um, you, we are doing a good job of telling patients not to top off their solutions. We could do a little bit better, but I think overall we're doing a pretty good job. We're not doing such a good job about telling patients when to replace their case. Right now, there's strong evidence to show that they should be replacing it every month or every three months, but you can see that most kids do it at least every six months or less often. So we've got to make sure that our patients know that they need to replace their case every one month or every six, three months at a minimum. And then we did find an interesting finding. Those fit as children had much more myopia than those fit as teenagers, but no other um, significant slit lamp differences. But ultimately, this is because we only fit children with contact lenses, or we used to only fit children with contact lenses if they were highly myopic. It's not because they progress faster, and we showed that with our randomized clinical trial. And then kids aren't more like, or patients aren't more likely to be compliant if they were fit as teenagers than if they were fit as children. In other words, fit as children, they haven't forgotten more of those messages. Either one is as compliant as the other. And then when you look at those slit lamp signs, there's no significant differences between children and teenagers. And we brought a subset of these patients in. This was really an internet survey initially, but we brought a subset of them in and we looked at their um, cornea endothelium and we saw no significant differences for those fit as children and those fit as teenagers. So the long-term consequences are similar and so is corneal staining. So what you can take away from that basically is that we're not doing harm by fitting kids with contact lenses at earlier ages. And this is just a study that was done by the contact lenses in youth group or the CLADES. And what it shows is that the highest risk for patients is actually in those college age years. Those fit as children, don't have more um, contact lens discontinuations or corneal infiltrative events than those fit in, as college age. We're very willing to fit college age, so why wouldn't we be willing to fit children? They might, again, have a better risk to benefit ratio than even those ones that we fit on a routine basis. 
So what I hope you take away from this is that kids really can wear contact lenses. They are fabulous at wearing contact lenses and they get lots of ben benefits, both visual and non-visual. So I hope that you feel more comfortable with some of this information fitting kids with contact lenses. And as we get more contact lenses with an FDA indication and parents learn more about the benefits of contact lens wear from the companies, you're going to be required to fit kids at earlier ages. So you really do need to become comfortable fitting these kids with contact lenses. So that's all my message. Let's see what kinds of questions we have from the audience and see if I can try to answer any of them. Great, thanks so much, Dr. Walleen. Uh, that was a wonderful presentation. And this is, I know, an exciting topic and, and a lot of things that you mentioned are, are great. And I agree with you, not only for soft contacts and ortho K and all these other things, but um, sometimes the parents <laughs> can be uh, uh, difficult to work with when they're trying to instruct the child instead of you and, and your staff. And that can be a bit frustrating. So I'm really glad that you kind of addressed that and kind of gave some tips.